Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda's Ease in Arlington Heights and Debbie, my camera Hello. person. <laughs> we are here today to do a couple of things. We do have a favorite recipe, so I'm going to show you that. This is the um, applesauce and cinnamon pumpkin, uh, no, no pumpkin, you could though, <laughs> applesauce and cinnamon. Uh, you Muffins. can make it out of your pancake flour. I wanted to make Betsy's, I made that actually, uh -huh. I wanted to make Betsy one of our educators scones and they are going to be coming, you're going to see them, but I had no sour cream. So if you have sour cream in the Oh, room, I had sour cream in there, Mom. You, you should did? have told me. Of course. Oh, I would have oh, loved to You get to do that next time. <laughs> well, then, these for sure. are good too. <laughs> so we'll be that. And they rest. smell delicious. And that recipe will be coming about Betsy. So, <laughs> um, so that's our recipe for the day, but I do want to show you the quilt of the day. And if this Ooh, is yes. really sweet. It's just so a real fun. And did you want to tell a little bit about it? It's called Chaparral. Chaparral. Uh, right, different uh, pronunciations, I guess, of, of C H A. P A R E L Chaparral. It's a, a Western with the wet, with the boots that are appliqued on, and those are Kona solids. And it's a nine patch, very simple to make. And uh, we've got some of these kits available if you like the Western look. It's a and, really cute uh, quilt. And it was really throw. easy to quilt because it was quilted in the hoop. That's correct. So again, very simple. Something you could do even if you didn't have a. One to quilt in the hoop, you could do it with a walking foot. <laughs> okay. okay. So these kits are available, and I hope you'll try them. Uh, you know, it's hard to find things for boys and for, um, you know, younger kids or older kids that are a little bit more masculine. I think this is really a good one mm -hmm. for that. It's true. So Very I want nice. to um, tell you a little bit about, I have a little technique that I just want to share with you, and at some point I'll do a little bit more on it. But today I have this wonderful batik quilt and this is a, a batik these batiks are all antique that I found in India now this is if you've never seen this this is a wooden stamp and that's how these batiks are made they're block printed and it is all hand carved by a uh, wonderful artisan who is in India I bought this one to kind of show you what these were made out of then I bought the fabrics, and all this is because the pieces themselves are such unique pieces. They're just squares that I that we've sewn together, and then we're just make a quilt out of it, or make a wonderful tablecloth. Although I wouldn't want people putting food on no, it. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it's really fun, and we have a lot of these antique quilts that have already been quilted because what these women do. Um, Bagru Studio, which is in um, a little bit north of Jodhpur in India, is where these are created. And these women literally take these white fabrics and they dye them, they hand dye them, and then they do the block printing. Now it could be done with uh, tie dyeing too, but mostly it's done with block, block printing like I'm showing you on this wooden one. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. Try some of our regular batiks, they're also wonderful. And at some point when we get back to normal, those beautiful Indian quilts that we have, well, they're Indian fabrics that you could use to cut up and do whatever you'd want, and they would make a wonderful quilt like this too. Now, the last thing here, these are gonna be on sale, and they're just fun things. People are asking me for all kinds of little um, designs that they can do simply. This is really a cute one that would really be great on a pillow. The circus detail, which would be fun even on a towel. Um, this is gorgeous. This is showing you multi-level, and this would be you know, multi-dimensional, multi and you could really do this one with a um, frame. It would be just uh, exquisite. And then, of course, we're going to think summer before too long, and you could do some of these patches, which is really great. And, of course, there's a whole ton of patches on the back. I've done this one. I love the elephant. I love the little kitty. Um, they are very reasonably priced. They're more than 30% off. And they are, um, you'll have to um, ask for them because there's different types. I think there's like 10 or 12 of them. And when they're gone, they're gone. So you can either call or send an email and somebody will get it for you. Um, the last thing that I want to tell you about today is that you know what day it is. Do you know what day it is, Debbie? It's Surger Club it Day. It is. It's Surger Club. We have once a month a Surger Club, and we are doing that today 
through our video and through our tele, whatever we call this. <laughs> and hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. Mary is going to do this. You know, these are very strange times. And Mary's going, and Madeline are going to do this. Mary's going to do the surgery club, which she normally does. But she's doing it on a very special machine. Have you heard of an air threader before? We just <laughs> press a button and whoosh, the um, thread goes through. We have one new, well, it's actually been in our classroom, but it's a considered a new machine, Ovation, which is not the $7,000 serger, mm -hmm. much lower. There's only one, and I can't, it's so low priced that it's way over 50% off. And the first person that calls after they see this video and wants it, will get it. So I uh, hope you have some luck with that. If you already have one of these wonderful surgers, please enjoy this video. Uh, Mary is really going to give you some really fun things to think about. So thank you, everybody. Have a great day and enjoy Mary. Okay, bye. Hi, this is Mary over at Lynn Disease, and I'm the surgery educator. And today, Madeline, my camera woman, hello, and I are going to show you a specialty stitch on the baby lock. The baby lock is the only one who can do it. Hi, we're here with Surgery Club. Mary, what stitch are we going to learn today? We're going to learn the wave stitch. Again, the baby lock is the one that can do it. It brings the lower looper up on top so that you can see both the upper looper, my dark blue, and my light blue is my lower looper. And it's called the wave stitch. Now Great. I've prepared the strap. We're going to make a small tote today. So I took a six inch piece of fabric by about 14 inches, it doesn't really matter. I've pressed it in the middle and then I have folded in to each edge again and then pressed and folded. And this is how I make my straps for totes and, and things like that. So we're gonna run the wave stitch on the very edge of my fabric. And I'm gonna do both sides. And I'm not trimming, I'm just running along the edge so I get a nice decorative edge on my strap. And then I'm gonna do the other side also. Run a small tail, flip it. I want both sides of the strap right side up, so I'm careful to do that. And I'm not gonna worry at this time about fray checking my edges because my edges are gonna be inside of the tote. Pardon me, my thread escaped. So we're almost done with the edging on the strap, and then we'll take a short break because I do have to change out my threads back to a four thread overlock to construct the rest of the tote. So we'll be right back with you. So let me tell you a little bit more about the threads we were just using, Razzle and Dazzle. They are a looper thread for your sergers. You can put them in the upper looper or the lower looper, but you can also use these in your bobbin for reverse bobbin specialty stitches on your sewing machine. So they're a great thread. I use them for lace work on the serger. This was created on the serger, the entire thing. You can do a different edge than what we did here with the wave. You can put one in your upper looper and one in your lower looper and have it just showing like that, at Christmas time, we do a lot of these napkins. Okay. Very pretty. And the difference between the Razzle and the Dazzle is the Razzle is a smooth thread. Okay. These are um, a rayon. The Dazzle, if you can see this oh, map. Oh, it sparkles. It's got, yes, oh, I thought you'd like that. That's it has me, that's metallic kind of in it. Very pretty. So the, we have them in all different colors, oh, and so I hear pretty. tell that we might be getting these on to the website sometime this coming week. Yes. All right, so this is Razzle and Dazzle. Perfect for the upper and lower loopers on your serger, and perfect for your bobbin 
Bobbin work, knitting, crocheting, crafting, beadwork. Yes, all sorts oh of things. Oh my okay. goodness! And they, I, I can't show enough how pretty they do sparkle. Now we're going to construct a small tote today. So what I've done is I'm going to put in pockets. This tote was created all on the serger years ago, but we're not going to do this one today. But we're going to put use this method for the pocket. So what I've done is I've got this beautiful butterfly fabric here, and I have a batik here. Isn't that fabric the, the gentleman from Anita Good Design? I believe so. Yes, Look at those is. gorgeous butterflies. Oh, so pretty. So what you do is this is roughly 10 by 10, and this was a larger piece also that I've taken and folded on the fold. And what I want to do is I want to end up with my pockets. So I'm going to put this here. I've already pressed my seam in. I want to put it here. I want to fold it. And I want to run a four thread overlock stitch so that I have two of these, one for the inside on one side and one for the outside on the other side. So I will do that, and I believe I was doing it this way. And this pocket I want a little bit lower than my other pocket. So we're just gonna fold it like this. I'm gonna take my beautiful Wonder Clips. Those come in so handy. Because you can't use pins on your serger. And then I am set up for a four thread overlock. And we're just going to surge all the way down the edge. See how fast it goes? And I'm only sewing at medium speed. And yes, that's going to be trimmed off. So we'll be right back and I'll show you how to do a zipper. I have layered, here's my pocket piece that we just made. This is going to be the inside. So this is my outside. Let me fix this for a moment. This is my outside piece I have added. So when I, you're doing a zipper installation, it's the raw edge of the zipper to the raw edge of the fabric, the top edge, zipper side down so that you have everything right side up, right side down, right sides to right sides. And what I'm going to do, and yes, I know I haven't even these up yet, and look, I have zipper extending to the left and to the right. I'm using a beating foot, a cording foot on the sewing machine. It has a little, Madeline, can you focus on this? See how underneath the foot I have a little tunnel? Oh, cool. That tunnel is going to ride on the zipper coil. And I'm using my four thread overlock stitch to put it on. I have extended my tail behind here because we're not using the sewing machine, so it is under the foot. And then we're going to surge this down. And again, I'm using these wonderful wonder clips. And I don't, at this point, if I cut a little bit off with my blade, that's okay. I'm coming to my edge. I'm going to go off a good three inches and then I'm gonna go like that to surge off. And now we'll be back to do the other side. So here I've laid it out again. So this is my inside. If I flip it over, here are my two outsides. So you can see I've got it right. This is my self check before I sew it on. So now I'm going to open back up the zipper so that I can get everything under my serger. We're going to put this here. Again, just like we did, raw edge to raw edge of fabric, the zipper coil facing down right side to right side. We line it up behind the presser foot. The zipper coil goes under the little tunnel. And we start sewing with the four thread over it. Lock. I come to 
the edge. I surge off and around so I don't cut my zipper. Because what I'm going to do now is close my zipper halfway. You can see that that's closed halfway, but I'm going to put everything here and I'm going to go pin it, square it off, and then I'll show you how we serge it together. We'll be right back. So we're back, I've squared off. I've inserted the strap on the middle inside between the front and the back so that it can get surged in there. You have to remember to put it in between, not outside like I want to do already once. So we're gonna start over here, just a four thread overlock. And I'm not gonna try and turn corners or anything. I am going to run right off and then I'll fix and fray check all my seams later on. I just love using batiks. One of the reasons why I like using batiks is I don't have to worry about which side is up and down. Some of you know that about me. And now we're going to come over here. We are gonna cut a little bit off. And if you need to, use 90 needles. But the machine goes through very nice all these layers, which is part of why I showed you this project. I like to turn my corner sometimes like that. And now we're gonna put the bottom together and then we'll have the unveiling. might want to use your stiletto. I didn't have my stiletto handily, so I'm using my hand there. And the reason I had you have your zipper halfway open is otherwise you won't be able to turn your tote inside out. You want to fray check and tie your knots on the corner, but we want to show you what this is going to look like. You can take our point turner and smooth out those points. But here is the tote. And you can make these totes, Madeline, if you want a pan here, you can make these totes any size. We've got without handles, with a handle, with a handle. And here is today's tote with the handle with the wave so stitch pretty. Oh, I love the and fabric. the pockets are on the inside. Now I could have chosen to put the pockets on the outside if I had wanted to. Same Very thing. Very pretty. So thank you. This was Mary and Madeline for Searcher Club. Have a good day. Bye.